Welcome to another Linfield Coaches Cat Chat. Joe Stewart here with head track and field coach Travis Olson. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's championship week, so we're uh, ready to roll. It's championship week. You guys will be heading just up the road to Newburgh for the NWC Championships this week, and I'm sure everybody on the track has been buzzing this week. This is what it all leads up to. Beautiful weather outside. Mm-hmm. How are the vibes going into to the final weekend here? Well, it's always good vibes. Uh, this time of year, uh, we, we you know, paper, we're peaking, you know, we're trying to uh, get our workouts all set, so they're feeling fresh, feeling ready to go, and, and everybody seems to be uh, ready to roll, and I'm excited to see what happens. Well, let's get into the story of the season this year, and that has got to be your heptathlete, Kira Howabu. I mean, she's been incredible. This is a girl that uh, came into Linfield with no track and field experience, tried to be a volleyball player, came over to you this year a little bit on a whim, and has become one of the best athletes in the Northwest Conference. A couple weeks ago here in McMinnville breaks a 26-year-old high jump record, or excuse me, long jump record, um, and then claims the heptathlon championship uh, the following weekend in the NWC Multis. I mean, have you seen much like this in your coaching career? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I think the best example would be Keaton Wood. Um, he didn't have a lot of experience in high school in, in uh, track and field. He had good football, and then you know, he's done what he's done. You know, he's a school record holder, the decathlon, and all of that, etc. And so she's even more of an extreme example of that, I think. Uh, did, didn't really do track in high school at all, just did the middle school, and um, so yeah, you're, I mean, I knew kind of coming in just at, after coaching for so long, like evaluating, just watching kids move a little bit. I think, well, she, she probably has something there, but I didn't really realize it until I really started to see her compete and she picked up stuff really fast. And so it's been a lot of fun for me and she's a great kid, works really hard. Um, so it's really fun to watch her progress. Besides just her, obviously, natural athleticism, I mean, what are the things that have led to being so successful and, and, and getting, you know, I mean, track, some people think it's simple, but we know there's a lot of intricacies to do a lot of different events well, especially. What's led to her being able to perform so well uh, in different areas? You know, I mean, I think, I think people just pick up stuff quicker than others, and she's one that um, picks up stuff pretty quick. She's just, I, I think, just a good overall athlete and you know her body awareness and um, just coordination is track and field how to run correctly and, and how to translate to jump really far when you're running full speed down a runway and you know the same goes for all the events and I think that the the you know transitioning into like the, the more technical events with throwing um, you know she's not as good as, as in, in those right now but she will be um, and so I think that it's going to be fun to see how she even progresses further um, in her career. And obviously the multi-event champion, but she can compete this weekend as well and will to try and bring home some individual scoring opportunities for your team as well too, right? Yeah, she's in scoring position. She's the um, favorite in the long jump. Um, she should score in the 100 and the 200, I believe, and the high jump. Um, and she's a part of both relays. So I think she's going to be a big part of our team's success this season. So I'm excited this uh, conference championships. I'm excited to see how it all turns out. Certainly. So let's go to the sprinters here. Uh, Evan Fassett and Dylan Jackson on the men's side. They've been your workhorses all year. Both of them uh, got a little bit of a slow start to the year, but have seemed to pick it up down the stretch of the season here. And then Paige Castle and Rachel Sillis, kind of similar stories. They both, mm-hmm. or all of your sprinters, kind of seem to be peaking at the right time here going into the conference championships. Yeah, that's the goal. Uh, we want to peak at the right time. Um, Evan and Dylan have, have been the workhorses all year. And it's, you know, we had some some crazy weather, uh, like usual, in the early part of the season. So it's really hard to kind of evaluate times or, and, and, and you know, not put too much weight in times when you're running into crazy headwinds and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, but they're ready to go. Um, Evans has come on pretty strong as of late in the 100. Uh, should be a good. We were kind of wondering if we wanted to go with the 400 with him this year, but like we did last year, but he's, he's running so well in the 100. Um, right now, we, we just got to decide to go one two, and then Dylan um, is is definitely someone that's going to score for us in the hundred two hundred. He's kind of like that leader uh, in the one hundred and two hundred. I think for us, and so I'm expecting big things out of those two. And then um, with Rochelle and Paige, um, I think that uh, you know we decided to go two four with Rochelle, knowing that Kira is going to run the hundred, so we have someone in the four hundred, and I think Rochelle can score well for us in that event as well as the two hundred. So. You know, we'll see what happens. I think that they're they're ready to go for sure. 
Your women's relay teams have looked really nice these last uh, few weeks or so, both the 4x1 and 4x4. Uh, you mentioned Rochelle and Paige, obviously, there. Um, mm -hmm. But in both of those groups, what's led to those units kind of coming together down the stretch of the year here? Yeah, I think just uh, they work together really well. Um, and I think just the consistency of, of that 4x1 team and, and just the handoffs. And, um, I'm expecting they could make a run at, at our school record, um, uh, if not just maybe, maybe at, at our home meet. And so they run 49 flat, and I think that um, that's definitely doable to, to run in the mid-48s, and, and I think they could get their name on that record board. On the distance side of things, Jenny Torres Bermuda is looking to end her career strong, as we talked about at the beginning of the year, and then Calvin Cahill as well, and he's the guy who's really come along here in his senior year. Mm -hmm. Alex Odehout, an anchor on that distance group, particularly in the longer distance events. Uh, what have you liked out of the way? The distance group has, has improved this year. This is a group we talked about coming into this season mm -hmm. as a team that could make big strides. Yeah, they're, I think they're, um, as far as Calvin goes, he's, he had some sickness early on that really lasted a long time. And I think it was really good for him just this last weekend to kind of come into form and feeling a little bit more confident heading into the conference championships. Um, it hasn't kind of gone exactly as he had hoped uh, this season, but he's I think he's ready now. Um, and Alex, you know, last year we ran the 15 and the 5 with him. He's focusing more on the 5 and the 10 this year. He's had some super, I mean, really good workouts. Um, so I expect some great things from him. Um, so we'll see. And then, you know, Jenny is, Jenny's been doing great things all year. And, um, you know, I think that she's going to potentially be a podium person on both the 8 and the 15. So, and then obviously helping us, helping us out in the 4x4. In the four four. So it should be fun to watch those, those seniors and then um, Alex as a junior um, and then our distance crew as a whole compete because I think we will get some points out of them. Good, good. Nice to see the, the improvement again. We talked about that group with their cross-country improvements last mm -hmm. year, really seeing the fruits of their labor. Uh, on the hurdle side, Javon Cloy was the guy that you were looking at at the beginning of the season to carry that group. And then Jordan Roberts on the women's side, obviously a really strong freshman season the year before. Uh, how have they kind of progressed throughout the year? Both still just sophomores mm -hmm. um, looking to make a splash this weekend. Yeah, Javon loves to compete. So does Jordan. Um, so I expect them to do some, you know, mix it up at conference. They... Uh, with, you know, Jordan is, is it's hard for Jordan because she she's really not in the middle of her season yet as far as her right. training goes. Coming off of basketball, Javon's been putting in the work all year and he has done all the right things. And so I really hope it pays off for him. I, I'm expecting it to. Um, he's, he's put in the work. So with both of them, I'm expecting some good things. On the jumps, Logan Roberts on the high jump, uh, the twin sister there, and then Sierra Crawford on the pole vault. That's somebody that's really come along this year. Again, somebody that didn't necessarily come into college with a ton of experience, but has turned into a really important piece of the team. And then Andrew Tro on the men's side. He's a guy that obviously we were watching after he uh, made a big impact as a yeah. freshman. Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, Logan last year, just, just missing national. Mm -hmm. I think his fielder, she came up, she's coming up an ankle injury from basketball. So, a little bit like uh, not as strong as far as where she was this time of year, but she loves to compete too. So I expect that she's going to rise to the occasion and be just fine. And Sierra and the Vault have been extremely pr uh, proud of her this year. Um, pole vault's a tough event, and um, it's hard to run down the runway full speed and expect to, you know, be okay uh, when you get off the pole. And she's done a great job of working through those mental, the mental side of things, and. Um, so she's someone that I think can, can put in for sure. Um, and then Andrews had some knee injuries this year, but he's a competitor too. And so he's someone that is in the mix as far as a podium spot. And so we'll see what happens. Your two top throwers on the men's side, Nick Olson and Jacob Sliska, both have conference leading time or marks to, to go into conference championship. Nick in the shot and, of course, Jacob in the Slifka, where is an area, of course, he's he's dominated his whole career. Nick also a uh, fourth best mark in the hammer throw mm -hmm. this season. Both of those guys looking for a goal this weekend, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the goal for them and, and uh, beyond. I mean, they're trying to hit those national qualifying marks, but let's take care of business and get that that first place uh, on both of those for those guys. And um, I think they're both coming into great form this time of year. This is when they shine. Um, so I'm expecting both of them at the top of the podium. And then you're trying to kind of reestablish that that women's throwing group right now. Mm -hmm. Ebony, Ebony Zenner. Uh, First-year javelin thrower has kind of been one of the athletes leading the way there, yeah, right? I think that she has some potential, and she's had some big throws. She's in, in, have been improving uh, throughout the season. So, 
if she can hit hit the positions, she can put one out there for sure and be a scorer for us. Um, and then Kiran Matson too is one that I think has potential to put one out there too. Track's such an interesting sport. Obviously, you know everybody's mind immediately goes to the physical part of it, but we know the mental part is a is a big impact of it too, particularly in these big meets. What's different in the NWC Championships in terms of staying sharp, keeping a clear head, as compared to just a run of the mill meet? I mean, in this one, obviously, you know the competition well. You see all the other athletes from around the conference, and you got to try to focus on doing what you need to do, even with national qualifier marks hanging over you, that kind of stuff. How do athletes need to stay sharp for a meet like this? Well, we've practiced that from day one. Um, you know, when we go to that first indoor meet of the year, I go, look, you guys, we have to get in the right frame of mind and, and, and to compete and um, treat this meet just like any other meet. And I think that we've done a good job of, of preparing ourselves mentally, not only physically, but mentally preparing ourselves to compete. And um, I think that this should be the norm. Um, yes, we're trying to gear up and, and do extremely well. Um, and I think just by supporting each other, um, you know, as a coach, knowing what buttons to push with each athlete um, to help them get in that right frame of mind. And um, I think we're ready. I think we're ready, and it's going to be exciting. To, it's just fun for me to sit back and watch. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be coaching a little bit, but, but they've already done the work. They know what to do, so it's going to be um, a fun weekend. All right, looking forward to it. Looking to see how the Cats compete again. Northwest Conference Championships this weekend in Newburgh, hosted by the George Fox Bruins at Stauffer Family Stadium. Field events will be getting 10 o'clock tomorrow at Friday. Track at 11 o'clock. Coach, thanks for the time. Good thanks, luck. Appreciate it.